Hello and welcome back to another Demisto tutorial. My name is Andrew Shama and this is Fetching Incidents. What are incidents? Well, simply put, incidents are events that we import into Demisto. They can be anything from something frequent that requires action, such as Karen in accounting losing her laptop for the tenth time, or something even more serious, like an active DDoS attack on our network. Now, Demisto does not detect these events on its own. Instead, it relies on third-party integrations which report the events. So you are probably asking yourself, how do I write an integration to collect these events? Don't commands only run in playbooks and in the war room? Well, yes, they do. But there is a very special command called fetch incidents, which we are going to talk about today. For this example, I'm going to use the FluTrack API. How it works is not super important, but basically it collects social media content that contains certain key phrases related to the flu. When it finds one, it updates the API and suggests that the poster might have the flu. While this isn't security related, it will give us a quick and dirty understanding of the basics. So let's get started. For brevity, I already have our parameters and basic settings all ready to go. If you would like to code along with me, either click the link in the description down below or head on over to our amazing documentation in the content repository. Generally, when you are writing an integration that will fetch incidents, it will also have other commands related to it. For example, up here I have the get flu incidents command. It works by running a get request on our API endpoint and returning the JSON. Then for each incident, it posts to the war room the basic information about the incident. But for this video, I'm not going to dig too much into that. Okay, if we want to use the fetch incidents command, we must first add to our execution block a listener for the command fetch incidents. It is super important to make sure the command name is written exactly as it is here, or else we will have a ghost command that won't work and the flu incidents will be running rampant around us without Demisto knowing about it. So very important, it needs to be called fetch incidents. Next, let's create the actual command. I'll call this one get flu incidents command. Recognize how we are still using the code conventions here? By the end of this series, you'll be a pro on code conventions, so don't worry. Let's define our function up here and start writing our logic. What makes the fetch incident command different than other commands is the need for context. What I mean by that is that we need to know when the last time this command was ran so we do not get duplicate incidents. We get the context by calling the get last run function. This returns a JSON which we can use to store values such as time or last ID pulled. It really depends on how your API is configured since they may behave differently. If this is the first time we are running this command, it will fail right now since there are no values in the context. Just a quick reminder, when I refer to the context, I am referring to the integrations context, not the type of context that we typically attach to incidents. So to catch this from throwing a key error, we will first look for the start time key in our last run JSON. If it can't be found, we need to give it a first run value, or a time delta. In this case, I give it a day, since the API does not post too many events at one time. Your integration probably will work a little differently, and so feel free to adjust this time as needed. Now that we have the time element, we could use the variables to build a query. Since this API does not accept time as a query, we will use the time element to do the filtering on our side. I'll use the same helper function we wrote in the other command. So now that we have our data, we need a place to put our incidents. I'll open an array here, which will contain the dictionaries of our incidents. Let's iterate over the events in the JSON from the flu API and do our filtering. Here I am comparing the tweet time with the start time. Start time is the beginning of where we are allowing incidents. Everything before that we don't need. Everything after, we will use. Every incident requires the following dictionary object. The name is the name of the incident and should give us a hint about what the incident is about. Here I'm just going to wildly claim that these people have the flu. Next we have the raw JSON field. Sending the raw JSON allows us to map the incident and keep stuff from getting lost. Don't worry too much about this now since I'll go over it at the end of the video, but do keep in mind that we need to dump the dictionary into a JSON. Here we are doing some logic to update the last runtime. 
Since this API does not order the events by time, we need to make sure we get the most recent timestamp to prevent duplicates. Finally, we set the last runtime. This step is really important because if we don't set the last runtime, we will keep fetching the same incidents over and over. All right, so this is where it gets crazy different. You know how we normally use the MISTO results to return the information? That won't work here. This special command requires a special return. We will use demisto.incidents to return the array we opened up earlier. Code-wise, that should do it. Let's just make sure we tell the integration we have a fetch incident command by opening our integration settings and clicking fetches incidents. All right, let's save our work and head over to the integration settings so we can add the instance. Search for flu, and we see our flu tracker integration pop up. Let's add an instance and make sure we click here where it says fetches incidents. This tells Demisto to run our fetch incident command. If you notice here, we also have the reset the last run timestamp. If we click this, it will delete the last run JSON in the context we discussed earlier. Click done and let's head over to the incidents dashboard. All right, while we wait for some incidents, I wanna tell you exactly how this works. Demisto will run the fetch incidents command every minute. There are custom configurations we can add to the Demisto config that can change that, but keep in mind that changes in the config are global. So if you are trying to run a fetch less often than one minute, we can add in some logic to our function that only run the import when it meets certain conditions. Again, no two APIs are exactly the same and yours may work differently. Okay, looks like we have some incidents. Let's take a look real quick. Remember how we set the value of raw JSON as the full JSON for the incident? Scroll down to the labels and we can see that none of the information is lost. So that essentially wraps up fetching incidents. If you have any questions, feel free to ask us or check out the documentation and see if the answer is there.